What I love about dancing is it makes me happy all the time. Um, and I just get a rush from it. I've worked with Alex for 11 years, since she was six years old. She's always been a really serious, hard worker, but also a really cheerful, cooperative kind of person. So she's been really always a joy to work with. My first symptom, um, I woke up and I had double vision. I didn't have any other symptoms until I was in the hospital. And then when I got out, I had my whole left side was kind of non-responsive and my speech was slurred. Well, at first it's hard to believe that your 16-year-old has multiple sclerosis. You'd think of that as something maybe more for older people. And, and the first thing is that we just wanted her to kind of get back. She was sleeping all the time. Her, her um, vision was off. She could, you know, we had to help her to walk even to the bathroom. And, and so we, we weren't sure what, you know, what her future was like at, at such a young age. I was scared, you know, that I would become paralyzed or something like that. When someone in your family is diagnosed with MS, I'd say their first need is prayer. Second, you need lots of uh, family members, friends supporting you. I think treating someone as if, in some respects, not a lot has changed. I think it's important that people um, around an individual in this situation try and create an atmosphere of normality, that things are going to continue as they have as best as possible. It was very uncertain and it was kind of not scary, but I didn't like the uncertainty of it. The nature of it is that it can come and go. It can strike when you don't expect it. Um, you don't know what the magnitude or the nature of the next onset will be. Um, after I got home from the hospital and I had been home for a month, I went to the dance studio and had a private with Corinne, my dance teacher. It was really difficult to see the change, the change in her. Um, there was a lot, of, a lot of physical weakness. It was scary because my leg was shaky, there wasn't any strength, it wouldn't do what it was telling it to because, you know, the nerves are dead pretty much. This is something that has the potential to be very debilitating and disruptive to a person's life over a very long haul. Um, it's, it can be a slow go. I didn't think that I would ever be able to dance on point again, but physical therapy really helped me do that. Um, my neurologist sent me to just a regular physical therapist um, and I went to that for a couple months and then I went to start seeing Amy Anderson, she's my dance medicine specialist, and Bethany Cobb, she does the Feldenkrais method and I went to her quite a few times for that. I don't know where she found the stick to itiveness because it was really slow. And she would come in and, and she'd been working really hard all week and she'd come in and it wouldn't respond. Next time it would respond, next time it wouldn't respond, so it wasn't consistent. She just had to keep pushing through and pushing through. It was really, really difficult for her. But by the same token, it's almost kind of inspirational because she's such a fighter. So we kind of cried together and we pushed together and, and it's just what we had to do, so we did it. You know, we watched her getting better and better. The, the therapies have helped, and we started her on her um, a daily injection, and, and it was hard for, to watch her have to give herself a shot, but, you know, she's mastered that and does it, and, and just, she has worked so hard, and there have been so many people helping her that it, it really is, you know, it's, we're doing our recital here, and a year ago, to look at the improvement, the, where she was to now, it's just, it's just, it is, it's a truly a miracle, it's been wonderful. And I always cry. <laughs> when I see my daughter dancing um, now, I, I, the word inspiration, it's the first thing that comes to mind, but it's, um, 
it's almost inadequate. Um, my daughter astounds me. So what's the most exciting for me is now to again see her like just take off and just fly across the room doing big leaps and stuff and it just astounds me. It's amazing to me to see her still like flying through the air and jumping higher than everybody else and there's nothing wrong with them. I mean it's remarkable, it's just incredible. So she's always a joy for me to watch. I feel like I'm dancing better even than before I was diagnosed. So my plans for the future are um, I want to be in a professional ballet company. I feel like I'm braver now and I have a lot more trust in God and my family and everything of that sort. I would not wish this on my daughter any day or on anyone to have to go through uh, the affliction of MS. On the other hand, I think having gone through this situation, having faced this adversity as a family, is bringing us closer, is bringing benefits, um, a bonding um, that we never would have had had we not had to face something of this magnitude. Well, my hopes and dreams for Alex are that she can live the life that she always wanted to live, that this is a disease that she has, but it um, doesn't own her, that she, she's continued to you know, grow up, be a dancer, get married, have a family, and, and she can do all that and have MS at the same time. I know that with Alexandra, as with everyone, God has planted the seeds of greatness in her heart. And as long as she perseveres, even if things don't turn out the way she may have wanted to a year or more ago, something remarkable will come with this. So while I would like her to have what she's always wanted, there may be something even greater in all this. God has in mind